Greetings and welcome back to SmartwatchTix.com. What would you say if I told you that we've got an advanced new generation health watch, a lot similar to the ones we've seen in the past that do ECG and blood glucose and blood pressure and temperature, all of those things. However, this has got new upgraded sensors, supposedly about 200% uh, more accurate, and they completely redesigned the body in the shape of the Apple Watch Ultra. Look at that thing. Really interesting. This sounds like it's going to be fun to take a look at. It's coming to us from Bears Come. Yep, we've looked at a few of their products already, and they are top-notch. They call this one the V, V-E-E. -E. It's Bluetooth calling in this as well. First time we've had one of the advanced health watches that uh, incorporates Bluetooth calling with it too. It's coming in at $70 and perhaps even lower if I can get you a discount coupon. You got a variety of color bands that go with it. Now in terms of the information they've got on it, I don't have a full on spec sheet, but I do have extracts from the uh, information on their website. It's got an ECG recorder function to collect the signal anywhere and monitor 13 different abnormal signals such as AFib and so forth. Uh, again, this is not for diagnosis and treatment, but it is a way that you can um, get your ECG chart and have the system look at it and give you some feedback. Heart rate monitoring along with... Um, high heart rate alarm and 24 hour monitoring is available. You can see all of that stuff in the app. You've got blood oxygen monitoring on this one. And uh, as you know, as we've looked at with the H-Band app, you have detailed things for your night blood oxygen, like Lorenz scatter diagrams and um, Heart rate variability is measured with this watch. It just goes on and on. I put this on here because it's their please note section, and it is not a medical device. It's for reference only. Not for those under 18 or diagnosed with uh, different types of arrhythmias. So be sure you're cautious in how you use this one. It measures radial blood pressure at the wrist. Blood viscosity is high, so poor circulation of vascular sclerosis patients such as, and it goes on and on, could cause data management errors. So they're kind of covering all the bases that you should be aware of and covering for yourself. It is an instrument for enjoyment. It is not a medical calibrated expensive device. Got it? Okay, good. Inside the box, in addition, we have a, a two-pin connector, magnetic coupled charger, the watch itself is really, really lightweight, and I don't have the bands on it, but it's a good strong magnet, as you can tell, for charging it. And then the uh, one they sent me is, uh, I don't think I've ever done this one before, is a white band. So we'll add that to the watch, and the case itself is really a nice overall presentation case. In terms of the manual, let's get into that. Instruction manual shows you the contents of what it's made of, and uh, the layout of everything, where the sensors are, uh, how to wear it. Everybody tells you wear it one to two centimeters up on your wrist to get your best uh, fit and best measurements. The uh, device language is settable. It'll adopt to the uh, language in your watch, of course, I mean in your phone when you pair it. One thing I found about this one, when I turned it on, you could select the language and then you couldn't go any further until you paired it to the H-Band app. So make sure you have your phone, you download the app, you get an account set up, because like a lot of the watches are going to, you can't even get the time on it until you pair it. So you're going to definitely need to, to do that with this one. How you start the device, how you turn it on... Uh, the quick settings, the watch faces. These are all the different ways you can look at your various apps. I tend to do it in the list because it's easier. We have words to describe what they are. But if you memorize the icons, you can do that too. You have only one button. The what looks like the lower button is actually the electrode for the ECG. And the speakers on, on that side, if you can see it in the reflection. There's more. Okay. Um... Here we go, auxiliary operation. You can rotate the crown, nice, and move in and out or change your watch faces and such. 
You can install the app again, HBand or HBand 2 app will work with this one. In fact, today I'm going to play with the HBand 2 app with you. Uh, that's because I got the HBand paired to a different one. So those two apps actually work independent but do the same thing. So if you have two similar watches that both want to use that app, you can actually use the two different apps. You have sports, heart rate monitoring. Uh, that's your basic heart rate. It does 24-hour continuous monitoring. You've got blood oxygen monitoring. Yep, uses the red diode, advanced technology. Blood oxygen again. How you can activate it directly from the app. Your activities. Sleep monitoring on this one. ECG detection now. and This is where you can actually see the ECG chart on the watch. A lot of them will take ECGs like that, but they don't show you the live chart. This one and a couple of other ones, all in this more rectangular, not the round ones, but the rectangular square uh, size format, tend to have that capability. His is new, a pressure test. This is, I guess, your uh, how much pressure you can handle, as in stress, not biometric pressure or altitude pressure. Um, but that's in here. Then you, of course, have blood pressure monitoring as well. Body temperature monitoring. Make sure you wear it long enough to stabilize. Both skin temperature and estimated uh, body temperature is presented. There's the blood sugar monitoring. We're going to look carefully at this because supposedly it's done differently in this watch than in the previous ones. And as we found out, the previous ones, there's questionable about whether it's taking real readings or just presenting simulated readings. Um, MET, M-E-T-T -T is an indicator measuring your exercise intensity. You can check your MET index on this one as well. And it looks like that. So that's something new. And in a separate individual heart rate variability chart is available to you. We've seen that in the um, overnight Lorenz scatter diagram area, but this is something that we get our own uh, separate uh, on the watch scale to show you. And then, of course, the whole thing of related to Bluetooth calling. You have all that capability too to initiate calls, you bring in your contacts, and do it all. And music player, since it's got speaker and microphone, you have uh, support of the music player as well for Bluetooth music. H-Band app again, personal tracking. I know I'm taking a while on this manual, but it's brand new. There's a lot of features we haven't seen before. Remote picture taking capability, whether is able, you're able to set that up and see forecast information too. Um, reminder functions you can set for alarms, stopwatch timers in this one, sedentary reminders are settable. You got your standard Google or uh, Siri voice assistant built into it, a flashlight as well, and a calculator. This is really covering it all. Um, app page function and introduction, going into how the app works. Of course, we show all that, so... I'll just show it here in case you want to freeze frame it and read it. Wear and maintenance, and that's it. Whole thing is an English manual and very extensive. Here it is with the white band on it. I like the white band. That's pretty striking. Once again, uh, just the body layout. You have this um, area here on the left side. It's a button on the uh, Apple uh, Ultra watch, watch Ultra. Uh, but here it looks like you got speaker port right there. There's a little hole right here. Not sure what that one's for. There's another one up here. Could be pressure relief. It could be microphone. There's another little hole right between the twirly knob and the electrode. And uh, these are the other electrodes for the ECG. And these, of course, are your diodes and sensors for all the other measurements. So there's one button only. It's a round one. It uh, actually works to twirl it. You can change watch faces, for example. And they've got some great watch faces in here. Really, really nice. And, of course, uh, you can download faces from the um, app to the H-Band, H-Band 2 app, in this case, that we're working with. And just, uh, yeah, pick whichever one you want. Now, in terms of what it uh, looks like, we slide down, we get just these four basic buttons here. This one, when you toggle this on and off, after you've got it all set up, will turn on the Bluetooth uh, calling capability going to time out kind of short on me. I haven't changed that yet. Uh, this is a do not disturb. 
Here's your basic uh, information for the watch, the VEEV. -E and here's our overall settings, which we will go in here right now and screen display, screen on, and change it from 10 seconds all the way up to its maximum of 30, I believe. No, keeps going. Look at that. Okay. We'll go to 60. Yeah. Yeah. 60 seconds, one minute before it will time out if you're using the watch. Now let's keep going from where we were. We were right up here and uh, that was the overall setting. So uh, taking you from the top, the health monitor switches are here and you can uh, activate or deactivate any of these to select uh, things that you'd like to monitor. Scientific sleep is where you're going to get all of the deep things like REM sleep and um, your heart rate variability monitoring. Um, this is your blood glucose monitor, and it does look different. It looks like they have done some major changes. And this is uh, your uh, pressure or your um, stress, stress level monitoring. I got them all turned on. It's going to use up the battery, but not much. I think you saw one of the watch, watch faces. It's at 85%, and I've used it for a full day. I put it on yesterday, all last night, with all these things going. Uh, so it's doing pretty good. So health monitor, screen display, we were in watch faces. If you want to look at them as thumbnails, this is a way you can do that. We were twirling through the knob to get to them. But I do want to show you this one is one of them that I've downloaded. Now you saw this on a very similar watch that we reviewed using the H-Band uh, band app uh, because it's using the same basic watch faces for the same square, uh, the E500, I believe, watch uh, configuration. That's a good one for nighttime use. I like it, but there's a lot of other ones available. And again, you can just loop through them um, with the knob if you want to, or you can do it through the setting in the screen uh, setup uh, with the watch faces. Brightness slides up and down here. You've got really, really nice low brightness and full brightness is all the way up. I'm running a little hot. You can see some of the colors were washing out. So let's make it half brightness from here on. Screen on, we just covered. Menu style, list, grid kind, uh, a planet, which is all circular, rectangular board. You've got a turntable style, a card style, which is something different we haven't seen, and waterfall. Let's play with the card style. Look at that. You've got them now much broader and easier to see if you like reading uh, close up like that. So... Um, those are available as well. I'm going to switch us back though so we can keep going with where we are in the uh, text version, which is list. Okay. That's all of the, um, and it's, it's popping us into the apps, which is throwing me off here. Let's get back into the screen display. And menu style is the last of all of these things. Then you get into your overall switches. Now pay attention to this one because the twist your wrist to see the time, if you want to turn it on or off from the watch, is here. It's not from that pull-down menu at the beginning. So this is where you activate that. You also can have sedentary reminders or goal notifications turned on or off, and that's in the switches second section. Your notifications, this is where if a phone call comes in or text messages, you can get them. There's a selection of social media apps, email in here, that you can uh, turn on or off uh, directly from the watch, uh, or of course, you can do all of that stuff in the app too. Other is all the other things that you may have that you'd like to have notifications pushed over. The overall languages are in here. And again, I guess I can twirl them here. You've got a, a small selection of them, but you do have English and Chinese and most European languages. The uh, QR code, this should download H-Band. And as I mentioned before, H-Band 2 also uh, works with this watch and they're practically identical. So you could use either one. Power off, factory reset, your device info we've seen when we pulled it down from the top right here. And that's everything in overall settings. So now, if I go off this direction, I get this pull out tab, make a phone call if you want to, weather in your area. I haven't had it link up yet with the H-Band 2 app with the phone, um, but it should. Maybe you really new to the H-Band app for the, for the weather part, but that should show up. And you got your most recently used uh, apps in here as well. 
Then you slide this way and we get into all these different cards. You've got the phone related one, keep ad contacts and call history is the very first thing you get to. Then you come over to your uh, activity. This is your step count in K in thousands of steps in per hour. This is really made for marathoners, guys. Uncle's lucky if he gets 100 to 200 steps an hour in here. So I got tiny. I did walk some, though. Look at that. I did. I really tried. Um, here's last night's sleep time. It uh, doesn't scroll up, so it's just showing you your total versus the goal. But wow, as you know, in the H-Bound Band app, you get much more extensive uh, information. Now, heart rate is shown here, and I have, you saw I was walking. Oh, it's trying to measure. I, I need to actually have it on to do that. I'll put my finger over it so we can kind of continue with that. Um, I did get out and walk a little bit, so I got my heart rate up a little bit above 100 just to show that it's working. As long as I'm covering the sensor, you'll see it'll pop into my current heart rate. You're high and low, but it doesn't show you any more information than that. Here's ECG. I'm going to come back and show you the chart on that because I really need to be wearing it for that. And this one, guys, this is blood glucose. Now, if you've seen the other uh, watches and heard me talk about them, you see a pretty smooth chart with three humps in it. Typical breakfast, lunch, and a late dinner. Uh, this is totally different. You're seeing some erratic jumps in here. On the app, you're going to see it even more clearly. Now, in the sake of science, I just finished a full mocha frappe from Mac Cafe at Love It or Leave It McDonald's, right? I mean, I got to test this thing for you. It's a sacrifice. And sure enough, sure enough, it really has jumped up and I'm headed toward my sugar crash, I guess. I presume. I do not feel that this is a simulation, that I happen to be lucky enough to down this drink at the same time that the simulation was going to start. So we might be on track with actually getting some uh, real measurements out of the device. It uh, was peaking at 8-something, and it's that coming back down now. So I don't know why it's timing out so quick. I set it for one minute, but you see it fading to time out. Uh, we'll, we'll see more of these results when I transfer it to the app after we talk a little bit more, and uh, we'll talk more about uh, blood, blood glucose there. Here's your basic blood pressure. It's using the red diode technology. If I get the... See there, it turns it on. And... Uh, it will give you a systolic over diastolic reading. And as we always talk about blood pressure, that's a tricky one for watches to get um, accurately. So check it against your calibrated instruments first to make sure that uh, the reading matches closely with what you're expecting it to be. We're getting a countdown as it's doing the test right now. And as soon as the bar disappears, we should get a reading. And then um, this is also, that's reasonable, this is also uh, doing this continuously too and you see that it is uh, jumped up over time since I woke up so the blood pressure is a little higher during the day being active and that's reasonable as well so it does see that, seem that it's taking some actual measurements here's blood oxygen it's hovering way up here around 97 or so and uh, I would be happier if the chart went you know like 90 to 100 but some people get it way down below 80 so it's um giving you a, a full chart there. And if you do have dips, uh, they should show up there. Body temperature. Now, it's got temperature sensor in it. I'm going to hold the back of it just in case. But it, uh, it's a fairly quick reading because when you wear it, it'll stabilize at a temperature. And you shouldn't see too much change in this. It's giving you skin temperature, what it's actually reading, and then a translation of what that body temperature would be Again, there's an algorithm of some sort to figure that out, and we don't know exactly what that is. Here's weather. This is where, if it's working, you'll get your weather forecast uh, from the app. And that's the last one. So push this, comes back. We've looked this way. We've gone that way. We've pulled down. Going up is where all of those notifications will appear. And that covers the basic operation of the watch. A second push on the button is where we get into all of our apps. And we uh, start up here at our workouts. These are the different things you can do, an outdoor run or walk, indoor uh, run, walk, so forth. There's no GPS directly in the watch, but as you know from the app, you can, um, you can set it up in there to get a GPS track. You have the HIIT in here as well. 
uh, yeah, some dance, athletic work, basic workouts, not really a sophisticated workout watch as much as it is a health watch. Yes, I could twirl this. It's easier. Heart rate, blood oxygen we looked at. There's your activities, your step count. Last night's sleep time, ECG we're coming back to. Remind me, all right? Here's pressure. Now, you don't get one of the cards on this, but you do get it here in the apps, and this is your stress level. And I'm doing a review right now, and I'm a little more animated and activated than I normally am, so my stress has jumped from 20-some-odd up to 39 reasonable understandable okay blood pressure we did body temperature and blood glucose we've done all that now a met is a measurement of like um exercise intensity as i understand it and i haven't been really active if i were i should see some bumps i got a little bit here very little bit but this is uh for those of you into fitness this is something you probably know more about than i do Heart rate variability. Now, this is a new chart on here. What we've done is seen this chart in the H-Bound app. It's done from midnight to 7 in the morning, roughly, and it's monitoring your uh, space between the heartbeats to, to give you a feel for how, um, yeah, how your heart rate variability is working, which tells you a lot about your body. There's reams of information on that. Heart math and other groups cover a lot of that stuff. This is the first time we've actually seen the chart that you do get in the app here presented on the watch. And there's a lot of variability in heart rate variability depending on your dreaming state and your movement and whatnot. But it's uh, something new that's introduced in this model that I expect now with this new user interface and these additional features in here to start propagating through all these similar type watches. So the E-Series, the 400, 500, 600, the 420 we looked at, there's a bunch of them, all were of an earlier generation. This is the first of a new generation of this type of watch. The inhale, exhale, breathing exercises in here. There's your phone calls, notifications. The music now, this is where I want to uh, let you sample what the speaker looks, uh, sounds like in this watch. So let's set this up. We're paired to the phone. I've got uh, some copyright-free YouTube music queued up on there. But it could be anything. It could be a podcast that you're playing or um, a, a streaming Spotify or whatever. Uh, when you're in it, you've got the volume control here. I'm going to hit play. There we go. Nice and loud. Can cover the speaker and instantly mute it. You're getting the title of what's playing across the screen and the song, I guess. You can skip forward and back through tracks, of course. And you got your overall volume control there, too. It is nice and loud. Really, really good. So I'm impressed with the speaker on this. It's uh, it's very bright. In fact, if you really crank it all the way up, on some pieces it goes into light distortion. So uh, you can power even more sound through it than the speaker will actually handle. So that's in the music section. Uh, ladies, this is your cycle tracking. Um, when you set that up in the app, your period, where you are, and what state is uh, you're in. You've got a remote camera. When you tap that, it should put the camera, well, if you're not in music, I guess, if you're in the app, it, it'll uh, take you into camera mode and you'll be able to use this as a remote but, uh, button. The weather again, you got a basic stopwatch in this one. And we always test this to see if you can go out of it and come back in and if it's running in the background. Rare that a watch will do that. And this one does. Look at that. It's still going. All right. Love it. You got countdown timers on this one as well alarms that you can set torch is your basic uh flashlight and i really wish that was up in the in the top you quick pull down and touch it you'd have it on because it's a nice bright flashlight you could turn it more or less off with just a dim glow if you want to and then we got find your phone it'll ring your phone if you uh, move too far away from it voice assistant is your google or your uh siri um assistant you tap it It'll put the phone in that listening mode, but you'll speak through the microphone here and you'll hear your answers come back right on the watch. So full interface with your uh, digital assistant. You also have a calculator in this one too, and it's a pretty decent one. Wow, it vibrates every time I uh, touch a key too. And 
you get pretty nice size uh, in white on black uh, digits, so easy to see in any kind of lighting too. And then your settings. This is what we went through before, all of the switches down through system where you can actually factory restore uh, or power off your device. You also can power the device off from the main page by pressing and holding the side button. You slide that and off it goes. Now let's switch over and take a look at the app. Again, the recommended app for this watch is the H-Band app. I'm using the H-Band 2.0 because I have a different watch paired with the H-Band, and they will pair separately to the two different apps. This is what the icon looks like in the Play Store. It's slightly different. When you open it, create an account, and pair it to your watch. You'll see the watch is paired right here, and you get the opening screen. Now, as a reminder, uh, when you touch more after you're connected, all of the different um, items that you could take measurements on or go into the settings on the watch appear right here. It's the same thing as when you go down. It's just a quick way of getting to it. Here's the pedometer stuff. This is my step count so far for the day. You see, that's when I did that uh, little burst of exercise, and you're going to see that appear in different places. Uh, that was 654 steps around 10 a.m. today. Last night's sleep time broken down into um, your total, your REM sleep, light and deep, awake times, falling asleep efficiency and so forth are there, and overall sleep quality score that they give you. This chart's pretty much meaningless. I can't really tell very much because it just jumps too quickly within one to two minutes between everything. Uh, I don't um, don't like that one. As you've seen many other sleep monitoring charts, you can really tell when you're in a REM state, for example, for 45 minutes or deep sleep. This just is crazy. Heart rate now, though, when you get in here, there's where you see the peak in my heart rate, and it matches in the white. That is the uh, exercise uh, that you're doing, too. So it's tracking your exercise movement and mapping it against your heart rate, which I think is really, really fun. Here's the different zones that you're in. I barely got up to fat burning for two minutes in that little burst, but it was something, something to show you on the chart. You can set on your heart rate alerts, and this is the actual heart rate details. This is the pulse rate every single minute in a five-minute uh, window right there. Uh, really great, great detail on these particular apps. The heart rate variability. Come into here, you get your Lorenz scatter diagram, and you get the heart rate chart. Heart rate variability on the watch presents this chart. Now compare the two. You see it's an exact match, and that is different. That's something new. You get uh, both your uh, recent reading in milliseconds of HRV, and you get your overall uh, chart. The Lorenz diagram, though, you'll only get in the app, and you'll see it will change from day to day. Here's the day before, and here it is the day after, or recently. Now, I did have the watch off for a half hour or so on the nightstand during the night, and that might be why the scatter spots are all over the place. Here's the actual HRV data as recorded every uh, 10 minutes throughout the night, and that's what's plotted on the graph, and the graph will... Um, give you the reference of what these diagrams look like. We're looking for a comet shape. If you have other shapes like a rocket or something, you can tap and you'll get information about uh, what that means. This is in both the H-Band and the H-Band 2 app. They've kept all of that information uh, and analysis in both of them. So it doesn't matter which one you've got. This is the overall report now on my particular chart. And um, it could be better. Yeah, heart rhythm changes full, full. There is a sudden change of heart rate slightly and a basic heart rate change. And again, as I mentioned, I took the band off during the night. So the night before, I know you're curious about all this, is a little more succinct and I don't have as much uh, heart rate change showing up. So it just shows you that it is accurately... Um, working with the real data. It's not simulation in what we're seeing here. Kind of what I'm always after. Is this real or Memorex, right? Are they really doing it? Or uh, are they just giving you charts to make it look pretty? And sometimes they are. And we've got to point that out. Blood pressure. 
systolic diastolic here's your actual readings and it's plotted on a chart can't tell really much unless it goes up or down or they get narrower or further apart uh, all for your analysis this looks a little more jumpy than the actual chart does when you go into it which i think is interesting it might be slightly different scales that it's showing here a little bit closer Anyway, blood oxygen, here we go. Um, during the measurement period, you've got a low and a high. And when it, those little bumps come together, it means that that analysis period was a little less. As I've mentioned before, in the early, early watches that use the H-Band app, this was a much more accurate, much more succinct in, in its ability to, to derive what exactly your blood oxygen was doing. It seems they've changed the app and or the watches to give this kind of a funky range thing. So I'm not seeing uh, instantaneous dips going down. Um, we'll do a whole thing about blood oxygen one of these days, and I'll go over all of that. Uh, let it be that there's really nothing we can do about it. All of the E-series, the 400, 500, 600, and this one are all showing similar type of blood oxygen charts. So we've kind of lost some capability in 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 how it's displayed. It might be an earlier version of this app could bring that back. And fortunately, there are archived versions of these apps um, available. And if it's so, in that upcoming video, I'll go over that and show you how you could download uh, a, an earlier version that might give you more uh, information in blood oxygen. The ECG, this is where you can start testing it directly from the app like we could in the others. You just put your finger here, you hit start testing, and it'll generate an ECG chart for you. Come in here, and uh, this is the ECG chart that I just recently did. And you can expand it sideways if you want to, compress it. This is the overall synopsis of the data in that 30 second or so uh, run. And it'll tell you an, anal an analysis of what it saw in the rhythm. So you could take uh, that for information to go to your doctor. You can literally play it if you want to, and it'll start it from the beginning. You can speed it up if you want to, so you don't have to wait for the whole thing to go through. And this is cool. You have to stop it. You can get into the waveform itself. And it's going to show you everything in the uh, chart like this. And that's really, really nice. This you can export out of here as an attachment to your doctor or yourself or whatever you want. It gives you the basic information, date and time. Well done. Very well done. I like that. And I did want to show you, since we are here, because I promised I would, I'm going to come back here. I still have the stopwatch running. So when it's running and you watch times out, it will come back to the stopwatch. Very, very, a lot of attention to detail on this one. I want to go into the H, uh, into the uh, ECG directly. Here we go. Now, this is taking it on the watch. I, I start it up, and it wants me to touch the uh, electrode, which is on the right-hand side. Ensure my finger's there. I'm holding the watch down a little bit, make sure that the back plates are touching as well. And now, as you can see, like in the E500, you're getting a really nice and clean. Look how clean this is. Usually, a one-lead ECG is noisy. Just if you're in an electromagnetic environment, in a house where there's 60-cycle electric wires running through the walls and such, you oftentimes have noise in these charts, as you've seen. But they've got filters that help to, to at least extract the accurate uh, heart rate from, uh, from the data. But this is super clean. So in another instance of how they've improved the algorithm and the process, that chart is representative of that. Now here's the good news and the bad news. You have that chart here. You could see it. The bad news is um, you can't transfer it. And it's just really frustrating. You can come down here. You can refresh it. It'll read the data. But it's not bringing over the instantaneous heart rates, that, or ECG charts that you're doing on the watch to the app. The only way to get an app recorded ECG is to start testing from within the app. Sorry, it's true for all of them. So it's not like you'll buy a different one than this one. If they're tethered to the, e, uh, the H-Band app, um, they're, they're not transferring. With that said, early, earlier ones, 20 pre-pandemic, uh, 
Boy, it's so funny, isn't it, that now we have that as a demarcation? There was pre-World War I, pre-World War II, now there's pre-pandemic. Well, pre-pandemic, some of these watches would take ECGs, you could see them on the, on the watch, and they would transfer over here to the H-Band app. Go to my playlist section, okay, smartwatchticks.com, look at the playlist, look for the one ECG plus PPG, and I've got them all listed there. All the watches that do this stuff are in there. And you can check the apps of the ones that uh, do it. And if they're still available and you really want that feature to take this when you're out away from your phone and archive it so you can transfer it to the watch, you can pick one of those up. They're older. They're not as refined. They're not as, as improved. Uh, but they're there. Uh, Maybe eventually they'll work that bug out and you'll be able to transfer it over. Or an earlier version of the H-Band app might support that too. So I'll check on that for you. I hope you guys are subscribing. There's a lot of work behind the scenes, honestly. Here we go, temperature. I've had it off. I've had it on. I've been playing with it through the review, reboxing it up for the unboxing and so forth. So you see how the temperature drops down a little bit when I'm taking some instantaneous readings. When you get a line, it means that the body temperature was in kind of a zone during that measurement period. And this is extrapolated or interpolated body temperature here, whereas skin temperature, and that's the average, this is the actual uh, skin temperature measurement. So from this, it derives that and it tells you what your maximum, minimum, average were, and your most recent uh, range in a half hour period. So it's taking it periodically. And typically it settles down, like right here, it's 96 straight across the board, but then uh, it bounces around when you're playing around with it. And of course, if you go out in sunlight, you're driving and your arm's out the window, you know, all, all kinds of temperature various variations can affect the reading too. Turn that on, you get the automatic temperature reading. If you have it off, you won't, so make sure you're turning all these things on if you want these continuous charts. There's nothing wrong with the watch. Don't send it back. It's, wow, it's behaving properly. You've been watching this video from the beginning, right? You remember when I tanked the drink, uh, the mocha frappe, and my blood glucose was running way the heck up here? Oh shucks, I can't get an instant measurement on it. And I can't expand these either, which is sad. But there you go. That was a peak of uh, a sugar rush, and it's it's definitely plummeting right now because I haven't had anything, no water even. Um, minimum, maximum, max at eight, and I am somewhere five five ish. There's a half hour range. It's it's showing you, and uh, that's again you can turn it on for automatic measurement. But it is behaving completely differently than the blood glucose measurements we've seen on all the other watches, which all looked identical day to day, watch to watch, moment to moment. You almost could predict exactly the same measurement on each of them at the same time. Uh, so this is definitely different. This uh, variation you're seeing up and down is more realistic, it seems, where human bodies getting different measurements taken at different times. I'm, I have high hopes for this. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm going to jump back in here from the future. I want to show you some days that haven't happened yet in this review because they've happened for me. And I've got blood glucose tracking July 27th. I want you to look very carefully. I've got three distinctive bumps with a lot of waviness going on. Check out the day after that. Okay, I didn't have it on, so I got kind of a little smooth thing here. But between these two dates, you see a similarity happening. Let's keep going. Look at that. I got a wild change right here. Steep slope. But pay attention to the peaks. Look at that. Here's today. I mean the future. Here we go. We're going to go back again. Let's show you those. I cannot say this is not a simulation. I am not eating my meals and taking in my sugars at exactly the same time every day, yet I'm seeing the peaks like I was in the earlier re smooth readings happening um, exactly the same intervals. Very interesting. So guys, if you get this watch, and as far as I know, this is the only one with the new uh, user interface and sensors in it. If you get this puppy and you're doing blood glucose and you're testing it with the fingerprint, please, please, please let us know if your measurements are matching. 
if they're even close, if this thing is even tracking uh, the, the direction it should be going based on what you've been eating and drinking, please let us know because you are the ones that are going to be able to help us discern whether this is something worth pursuing or something to just say, ignore it, guys. Okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies, uh, your cycle stuff. Um, you guys could report too if you want to on this, but I don't think you really have to because it's all, you know, you know your period cycle, you know how long it lasts, and you know when it started. Those three data points that you put in up here will allow you to get an instantaneous reading of where you are in your cycle. And you saw in the app here, it'll show you where you are as well. This is how you can turn these things on or off or rearrange them to your liking. And that is the dashboard, dashboard right there. All of this can be extracted uh, to email or, or wherever you'd like to. Here's the workouts. It'll work with the GPS movement for, um, for recording a, a track when you're using your phone with your watch. You can have smart movement where it will automatically detect if you're starting to run or walk and, and record all of that. And finally, my... All of this is similar, if not identical, to the H-band, so I'm not going to go through it in, in detail. Uh, your logged in name is here. This is the information for the watch itself and some basic, basic stuff on units and whatnot. You can log out. This is the actual watch information itself. This is where you can do sedentary tracking. Here's your heart rate alert, twist your wrist to see the time. You can turn it on and off here as well in the app. And there's that one location. It's going to be a quiz at the end. Where do you go to turn it on and off in your watch? Because you want to learn that when you go to bed at night, right? Uh, here's pairing. Bluetooth calling is connected. This is new now. This is uh, It's in this app, and it's, it's showing it up for this one. But all the other ones didn't have the Bluetooth call connected. Uh, capability. The, this is a real nice enhancement to this one. Your personal blood pressure mode, your personal glucose level um, average, I guess. Uh, that's where you can put this in. And then it'll base its readings by taking into consideration your normal systolic and diastolic reading that you get at your doctor's, your normal glucose private med um, uh, reading. Here you go for uh, setting your overall session time whatever you want to. I don't know why they do it in discrete seconds. That's kind of crazy, but okay. Now we're set for 48 seconds, and it should be the same on the watch. It updates it interest instantly. The weather settings, it's not really... I'm saying weather push, and I save it. I want it in Fahrenheit, but it hasn't been tracking on this one and some of the previous watches. So I think there's a glitch in the server in China that's pushing the weather out. Your overall switch settings, these are all of them that are covered and they are all on. Dial settings, here's where you can pick whatever dial you want. And uh, when you go into more faces, this is where you have a selection that you can choose from. You can send one of them over. I like that one. That's a fun one too. In fact, I'm going to take that one in just a second. But look at these bright, colorful. This is uh, the one that I've been using at night, you know, just for a soft glow in case... Uh, I don't want to light up the whole room, but my goodness, this is a really fun one. Analog and, oh, hey, it changed. Whoa. No, it does that. It updates them and it moves it around somewhere. So before you touch one of them, make sure it settles down first. There is that uh, horse one that we see on the Apple Watch a lot and so forth. Yeah, nice, nice. This is great. You're getting to see them flip and change. So freeze frame any of them you like. Look, we got theme times of the year popping in Christmas already. That's exotic. Wow. Okay. And so forth. And again, it's flipping about. Okay. So all of these are available to you. You just simply tap on this puppy. It does that. It's downloading it from the uh, server to your phone. So now it'll live on your phone. So in the future, you can install it directly without having to even be connected to the internet. When you're Bluetooth connected, as we are, it will push the watch face over and we say done. And now in terms of watch faces, this is uh, the stopwatch still running. Oh, can we stop it now finally? All right. We're done. We'll get out of there. There you go. There's the watch face. And you haven't really seen it on, have you? It's a very attractive watch. It does look 
similar to the Apple Watch Ultra. Um, the bands are different. They are pin bands, right, and are not the slide-in kind. And you heard the speaker. It's nice and loud. That's great. So that's all the stuff on dials. You can check your firmware factory reset. You can disconnect the watch, which is different than uh, logging out of your account. So if you have one of the other uh, watches and you want to pair it to this, you can. Battery level is shown. I think we've covered everything. That's all of this stuff, and that's back to the dashboard. And It just updates whenever you pull it down. Again, coming in here lets you activate anything. I can go right in, do an ECG test remotely um, just by tapping on there. So... By way of summary, this is the V, V-E-E. -E. It comes to us from Bearscom. It is the first, the only one I've seen so far that's using this really advanced technology in this new form factor with Bluetooth calling, loudspeaker. And if I'm correct, remember in the specs, it says that this thing can be worn during shallow water activities like swimming in pools and shallow water along the coast, but not for long periods. So that's saying it's waterproof. I'm a little goosey to drop mine in water, um, but it's uh, not in hot showers or any of these watches. You don't want to put them in anything hot or forceful water like diving or doing a breaststroke, you know, where you're getting, it's hitting hard in water. But it's even claiming that it's waterproof to an extent, certainly should be rainproof and whatnot. It's a great deal uh, for $70 with all of the technology it's got going on in it. Yeah, yeah, I, I like this one. Okay, thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you again soon. And please give us some comments on this one, especially related to blood glucose and uh, your overall opin opinions of the accuracy of the other uh, biometrics when you get one and test it out. One last thing. Now, I know at least one of you guys and probably a lot more are going, that's so cool. I love it. But you know what? I have so many watches already, and I have no more arms to put them on. I, yeah, I got a pass on this one. As cool as it is, I just wouldn't ever wear it. And you know what? That's okay. Tic-tac that. What? Tic-tac that. Tic-tac it. That's what I've done with my E500. Uh, Same thing. I'm getting the ECG chart just like this in a tic-tac box. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I put the watch in here and uh, I got the charging cable to fit even as well. And if I want to have a quick ECG fix, I can come in here, touch the electrode, slap these two right here on the palm of my hand, and voila, I will get a quick ECG reading. Now you notice how it's not as smooth and clean as the one we just looked at, the V, V-E-E, -E, right? Uh, it settles down, and, and it's pretty darn good, but the technology has indeed improved. Now, why the heck would I do this? Well, if you've watched the channel for a while, as I got some heart issues I need to keep an eye on, especially if I'm working out outside. I got to monitor whether I'm going into AFib or not, and I can at least get a chart that shows a reasonable likelihood or not of a heart issue. And I can do it from a Tic Tac box. So... What about this one? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. It's a little bit different size. Uh, let's unstrap it. And will it fit with the wire? Look at that. Smooth as can be. Now, it's a little bit taller and the, you know, the things are pushing on the wire. So if you take the wire out, now if you slide it in, oh... You could even have some room for the Tic Tacs themselves in there. You could have... Wow, I love it! Okay, this is going to be my next pocket go-to watch because I like the ECG chart better on this one. And sure, uh, just like we showed you just now, we uh, with the um, E500, I can do a chart simply by touching here putting the electrodes on that fleshy palm part of my hand. Uh, look at how clean the ECG chart is on this one, just instantly, and lots of detail. So my suggestion, get a V, have it around. If you have any kind of uh, interest in doing all of these measurements, especially ECG, if you don't want to wear it, tic-tac it.